So I will take a moment to introduce our guest speaker tonight. Uh, Watterson Boilo has been uh, nearly 20 years in the fintech, fintech industry. He has a bachelor's degree in electronic engineering from the State University of Haiti. And I'm very proud to share, he is also a graduate of our master's program, Go Bulls. Uh, he has managed the implementation and integration of over 30 huge projects across a range of industries, um, as well as authored two publications, very big deal. And tonight you will be speaking on how to apply AI tech uh, within the retail industry. So please help me welcome Bob Hudson. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, USF. Thank you to everyone that making this presentation happening. Today, uh, I, I hope you're gonna enjoy the next hour we're gonna spend together. So let me start with this story. I'm gonna start with this story. I have a story for everything. <laughs> so the first thing, how we call this story, uh, how target able to predict a teenage girl was pregnant before her dad, her dad did. So an angry man went to a target outside of Minneapolis asking to talk to a manager. And he has a coupon. She said, my daughter received this coupon in the mail. And she's at high school, still in high school. How come, guys, you send in coupons about baby clothes and cribs? The manager doesn't have any idea what the man was talking about. He turns to the mayor. He said, are we sure we sent this to, to, the, to the man? The mayor said, sure enough, he was addressed to the man's daughter containing advertisement for baby clothes, maternity, maternity clothing, nursery furniture, and smiling infants. The manager apologized and called again to apologize. But few days later, the angry man called the store to apologize, saying he had a talk with her daughter, but it turns out the teenage girl was effectively pregnant. And he said, I owe you guys the apology. And she's due in August. But how did it happen? While Target was knowing about the teenage girl was pregnant before her dad did. So I will leave the rest of the story and explain you how did happen at the end of this presentation. So this is the agenda for today. We're gonna talk about artificial intelligence, sure. The state of AI in the retail market, we're gonna explore challenges, opportunity, the solution that some some key retailers have in place, some key findings about AI, and I will leave you some with key takeaways and effective business use cases. Let me start with this PwC study to give you a broader perspective and context about what direction AI is heading in. 15 $0.7 trillion, that's the contribution the AI to the global economy by 2030. According to the same study, PwC estimate $15.7 trillion, the AI will enhance the global GDP by 14%. That's huge. Of this $15.7 trillion, $6.6 trillion will be most likely come from 
uh, enhance increased productivity while $9.1 trillion from consumption side effects. According to, the, to this graphic, you will see which region will be gain the most from this AI contribution. China, Europe, North America, sure, led by the, by the US, will see significant enhancement on the GDP. So what sectors AI will be more making more impact? So McKenzie Global Institute predict that AI will have up to 11.6% impact on travel industry revenues. Sectors as, such as retail, financial sector, we have healthcare, will experience significant gains from AI. But the, the main one, the retail market, will see the greatest aggregate dollar impact. So what tangible business value of AI in retail sector? You can see that this, we identify four biggest AI potential. First, the personalized de uh, design and productivity. AI will remove time consuming manual tasks from workers, which lead to a productivity gain that let workers perform high level tasks that only human can do. In terms of consumer benefit, what's the benefit of the, of the, cons the consumer? Customer will, be, will spend less time to explore catalog, website, mobile app to find product they want. Anticipating customer demand. So as you can see, the retailer can anticipate any type of, of, of uh, demand from the market signal. The target example is target is a, a vivid example that you that uh, I just give you. They also combine those market signal with with some criteria such as geographic, demographic, his, historical data, and behavioral data. So, I, and in terms of anticipating customer demand, they can use AI to do that. Inventory and delivery management. AI is helping retailers now to optimize the inventory, reduce waste, and avoid stock out and overstocking. I will provide you two instances. The first one is Walmart. Walmart is using the AI power solution called Aiden. Aiden helps Walmart to reduce out of stock incident by 30%. Another example is Kroger. Kroger used an artificial intelligence called QVision. QVision leverage sensors and also machine learning to track inventory, le inventory level at real time. As a result, Kroger able to reduce waste time and wait time at check out and also what it does is just improve customer satisfaction. That's two key solutions. Reducting churn and customer retention. If you work in retail industry, there's key numbers you have to know. First, one of the key numbers you have to know in the retail sector, it costs about five. 10% times to acquire a new customer than retain existing one. That's a key number. You have to know when, you, when you're working in the retail sector. To back up my statement, I will use Spotify example. Spotify saw a 16% increase in churn subscriber reactivating account 
after deploying an AI power solution win back program. Another key number you have to know when it comes to retail sector, if you're able to reduce your customer defection by only 5%, that will give you a leverage to increase your profit up to 95%. Let me say that again. If you're able to reduce your customer defection by 5%, that will boost your profit up to 95%. That's, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. To do that, I will again use another example to, to give you how AI is being used in the retail sector, Netflix. Netflix find a AI product recommendation reduce cancellation by 20, between 20 to 15, 50%. It also contribute to 75% annual member retention rate. So that's an, another application of AI in retail sector. So everybody now, I'm not saying everybody, that's, let me take it back. Most retailers is using, are using now AI. The state of AI in retail sector, so this is what, what, what the market dynamics now. E-commerce has transformed the retail and market and created new challenges. In order for company to stay competitive, you have to, to at some point of time, you need to, to use AI. So the stake have become so high, they turn to automation and AI to analyze large amounts of data in order to make faster and better decisions. Among of those challenges, we identify bias problem in AI. What is the bias problem in AI? Usually we call it responsible AI. Responsible AI, that's, that's a, consists of the presence of unfair and discriminatory outcome, which usually often come from, as a result from biased data, biased algorithm, or biased human interactions. Those biases in AI often lead to a discrimination against a group of people, increased stereotypes, and have real cons negative consequences on human and society, especially in areas such as loan eligibility, you have job matching, we have housing market, all those, and also medical diagnosis. The another, another uh, challenges that we, we uh, that currency facing uh, the, the market is we can data governance. It's about to ensure the company data is high of quality, usable and secure. Data quality is a one way to mitigate those biases I, early, I, I, I previously mentioned and also performance issues. So the, when it comes to AI, the background, the core, of everything need to start with your data, mostly with your the quality of the data, because we're gonna use the data to train our models and based on the train, uh, based on this data, if it's not so quality, qualified, you're not gonna use, uh, you're not gonna have a better result. Another challenge is, is lack of a, a skilled personnel. So we can have the fact AI is a new, is considered a new field. There's not enough as many experienced professionals to, with decades of experience, in, with decades of experience, we can train, mentor the next generation of AI experts. When it comes to drivers, there's multiple factors that drive retails in uh, retail, uh, drive artificial retail sector, including goodness about AI. The goodness about AI 
we have the media coverage. The media coverage, so seeing the inception of chat DVD in November 2022, the media play a significant role in spreading awareness about AI. We, we start seeing now educational initiative. So we start seeing uh, college, university offering courses dedicated to AI. Business application. More, many organizations are recognized that the potential of AI to enhance their operation in terms of gover government regulation. So you start, you, you see the, I think the last time uh, back 2023, the Congress invite most key actors in playing a key role in AI industry to, to talk about AI and to uh, also educate them about what AI can do, what AI cannot do. Last November, we see the President Biden have an executive order requires that developers need to submit the, the, test, uh, the AI model test result before it goes public. And the other drivers, uh, driver in, in retail sector, we have multiple channel and omni-channel strategies. What is that about? So we, we, we've been seeing retailers offer many ways to shop. We have physical store, we have online, we have mobile app, we have, we have a social media apps, all those, that's a lot of ways if you want to shop a retailers can offer you multiple channels to, 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 to shop. But the, om the omni-channel retail provide unified customer experience regardless the channel that you use to shop. And we need the, to enhance customer experience and improve productivity. In terms of opportunity, what we try to happen, what we, what we can take advantage of, we can take advantage by leveraging the power of te AI technology to expand profit but in the retail sector and sustain growth. And also tackle the supply chain disruption and rising price uh, while we try to provide in personalized ex shopping experience. The main objective we we try to, which we are seeking, consists of leveraging the power of technology such as technology such as we ha you have large language model, deep learning, machine learning, and data to provide tangible business value. That's what the presentation is about. Predictive personalization, this is a marketing technique. So we try to customize, customize the offer that's, that's uh, a, to, to, to predict client demand to tailor offer across channel. Customer segmentation, this is a key one. Customer segmentation is about to cluster, to cluster your customer based on certain characteristics such as geographic, demographic, behavioral, historical data, you, psychological as, as well, because you can, you, you can play, you can use the culture, you can play with beliefs to sell or to use, uh, uh, to, to use customer uh, data. Customer session, uh, Customer segmentation leads to two key advantages. First, it gives you new business opportunity. The second, it optimizes in terms of promotion and marketing. You can personalize your marketing since you already have your, your customer segment that you can uh, uh, play with. I will give you another uh, a, I will explain you how Target was able to do that based on the segmentation of the customer base. And also they, they use some of the techniques to specifically target or personalize their promotion, personalize, personalize also their offer. And 
in terms of business expectation. If I'm a businessman, what that's great. You can say, hey, I can do this for me, and I can do that for me. That's that's great. But what 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 does that, what does that mean for me? That's that's my question for do you. If you are a developer, if you are an AI tech, that's that's my question for you. The outcome is of a business perspective. What is that? For me, if I'm a business or a retailer, I would expect to have an increase in terms of my in terms of customer loyalty, improve my customer satisfaction. So we will see an example of Uber. Uber, what, what they did now. They can use based on historical uh, your uh, behavior ride, the length of the strip, uh, the average pickup, your location, to make sure there's will be there will be someone in your area to pick you up at the time you need it. The other thing that will be good for me as as in terms of business perspective is is one is targeted strategy marketing so based on the customer segmentation i can offer you specifically product that you need not like i think mass mailing send you offer that you're not interested in no that's that's not the point that's the that's the important of of of, of using ai and keep price competitive you can have this Let's say you go online, you want to purchase a, uh, a ticket for, for a concert or sometimes for you and want to travel. And at the moment you went to the website, it was your own price. If you, if you look at closely, you will see the price, the price is, is changing. That's, that's AI effect. So, you need to keep the price competitive based on we have, we call it a uh, pricing algorithmic strategy so we can change in the price based on your interest what's the problem we try to solve here we as a fintech we as a developer we as uh, people involved in in that massive a, a development of this technology though, those days. We try to live with those technologies, specifically in that on our case, we try to power, leverage the power of AI technology because AI has the multiple technologies. LLMs is one, machine learning is one, deep learning is one, neural network is one. We have different technology in terms of AI. Specific in my in our case, we try to provide valuable insight to expand profitability, sustain growth in competitive market. So, what is this? What's the research strategy? We specifically focus on two key points. First, create a cluster for, for the customer. What is gonna give you? What does give give us? It's gonna lead. To a space to base to categorize our customer based on geography, historical. Sometimes we use we use another, another another key point that's uh, a demographic and behavioral and psychological. We can use that as well to cluster specific uh, a, a a customer our customer base. The second point that in terms of research strategy, what we need, we try to improve relationship between the client, the customer, and the retailer. How we can do that? We try to engage with the customer. We call it customer outreach. So the way you go online, you leave your comment, you say, oh, I, this product, I'm not gonna purchase from you again, guys. You, you leave comments with reviews. We, 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 we have a different way to, to capture those comments, those and transform them 
in terms of a, a marketing to have you a better a personalized product that you need. That's that's a that's a key strategy of the research. So what we use we use the eight data set from Brazilian market uh, from 2016 to 2018. So usually what we do when in terms of research, you collect data. The way, how do we collect data? You can do survey. You can do this. You can have a, a personal interaction with with uh, with customers. So there's a multiple way to run. In in particular, uh, a research what we do we do already have a massive data set that that can constitute, we can uh, a train our model, AI model against that to, 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 to extract insight from, from, that, uh, a, from this data set. Methodology, this is the same step that we normally, everybody, everybody use. You, uh, there's a problem we have to try to solve. We collect data. The data that we collect, we can have in multiple ways. We can have in website. Uh, this could be text data. We can it could be uh, data we already have from the customer side, and we clean. We we make some cleanup. We divide different. We want we train train set and also data validation set. That's that's normal a uh, methodology that everybody using. And we train the the, the model if it's not producing not the, the, uh, what you expect, we retrain it again. So uh, that's, that's the, the process that we apply in order for us to get this uh, a, a research done. In terms of innovation, what the key competitive of that solution? And we have multiple existing study. We have multiple, we have different uh, solution out there. So what makes this particular solution uh, compared to what we have others? Like, the, but what what make what it make make it special? In terms of existing studies out there. They, they have proclaimed the potential of AI to drive innovation, improve customer's experience, optimize operations, and increase profitability in, in the retail sector. But what they failed, they have failed to refine upon those findings and adapt the specific, in the specific retail context and address new challenges as they rise. Our proposed method, what, they, what, what it did, is a two-step two process approach. First, we cluster customers based on geographic, demographic, behavioral, that enable retailers to implement dynamic pricing strategy. And also we use a natural language processing, that's a technique in sentiment analysis to make data and use data from social media, customer reviews, feedbacks, and customer offer. Back, back in the day, like uh, 20, uh, 2000, 2010, all we do is, okay, if as a customer, if you can provide me some review, that will be good for my business. So people go on Google to see, or, it, people leave some review for you. You are a good, a good uh, a, uh, a merchant. You are a good vendor. So people try to to see the review based on that. They make some purchase. Not today. <laughs> this does not apply today. Okay. Today we have social media. That's a game changer. We cannot rely only on those channels to 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 have to have customer. No, we have social media. We have uh, a, a you can people can use WhatsApp to sell. People using WhatsApp. They use Facebook. They use Twitter. If you have a good com a cam marketing campaign, Twitter now it's X is a good way. Is a good channel to use. To, uh, uh, to promote your product. 
back in the day, you only have TVs, you have an advertisement in Google warning and TV, you, you're good. That's, that's it. Or you can have people put some reviews on for you to Google, you're good. No, not today. So those, that is particular that provide that solution, a key advantage, key competitive advantage that make it unique. So that's what uh, existing study that failed today. So that, uh, we try to, most of, most of my research is business oriented. I'm not like a, guy like you're doing your research and you're great, you do a beautiful uh, research and everybody uh, uh, applauds you. No, for me it's very business oriented. If I can ask you some key que business question you can answer, I'm not interested, I'm out. So that's, that's, that's a gift. I apply this on that research first, we try to answer those business questions. Based on your model, can you tell me there is a trend on that market? It clearly indicates there is a trend over time. Is it consistent growth over time with, you can notice is a surge in online purchase by customers. Based on this graphic, can someone say what will be the best day for people to go online to shop? Based on that. Can someone that identify? Be best for the customer. <laughs> What's that? Best for the company or best for the customer. No, no. So what the, what, what, what the, what the day people tend to, to go online to purchase according to that? It looks like Monday afternoon. Okay, great. Monday is, is the day people went to purchase. And when 4.30, that's the time they go online to purchase. For me, as a, let's see what I say for me, as a retailer, that's, that's very important for me. I'm going to use that to ship some key product from one warehouse to another. From if I'm, I'm gonna monitoring if I'm out of stock or, or overstocking. There's two things, out of stock, overstocking. We try to balance things out. And so we can answer three key questions for, for the retailer right here. And based on also this graphic, you can see the highest number of sales is on November 2018. The Brazilian market has something called Friday, Black Friday, the same way you have it, guys. They, they have it on Black, they have a Black Friday on November. So you can see that uh, uh, on, on this graphic. How customer population is distributed in, 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 uh, the country? The graphic reveals that Sao Paulo has the highest customer population, which is by 42%, according to the graphic. 13% of the customer live in Rio, Rio de Janeiro, while 12% use uh, is living a uh, uh, on Belo Horizonte region. Generally customer, the order fall under three categories, bed, bath, and table. However, additional bar, a B varied a, uh, analysis can, you can see uh, Sao Paulo mostly concentrate uh, the orders in terms of electronic, bath, and, and table. This is, this is for the, in terms of technicality, that's what we use. 
We employ civil supervised machine learning approach, include the label data technique, bag of words technique to create a dictionary vocabulary. Because when someone leave a comment, when someone leave a feedback online, you have sometimes they put whatever they want. So you as, as a developer, you as a FinTech AI a developer, you have to, to capture and translate that in terms of uh, a, in terms of someone that human can understand. That's a very important. So we use doc document frequency method, natural language processing. So uh, based on the data set, we have 41,000 customers li left uh, multiple comments online. Out of 41,000, we, we, we use different type of techniques to, to make it uh, a, a happen and also use uh, different techniques to, to, to have someone can interpret interpret the, uh, the language and, and even though is you can understand it but at least you you have you have a way to make it uh, happen in terms of different uh, techniques that you can use in AI so the customer sentiment were utilized to utilize to train the model and also as an emotion AI using logistic regression and also naive bias model. So you can see on the right side, uh, the confusion matrix. So what we come up, you can, you can have a false positive, a true positive, uh, a false negative. You can have it in uh, an ID what being used in terms of confusion matrix. And uh, in terms of ev model evaluation matrix, uh, we, we use different approach, ECC, prevision, recall. So uh, according to, to, the, uh, to this table, you can see uh, the native bias achieved about a high accuracy is 88.65% 80, 80, for the training set and 88.757% in test set. So that's where we, 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 we divide the data set in, in between a test, test set and train set. The train, that's the, the, that's what, that's the set you're gonna use to train your model. To validate, to validate what you have, you use a test, a, a test set to have it. In the, on the test, we have uh, this model perform about 88.7% in terms of accuracy. Uh, the, the confusion metrics that we use in order to calculate it, provide any context uh, in terms of different evaluation, you can see which model is uh, a, a perform better than, than, than the order. Let's back to the, to the target one. So the question I left, how target was able to predict the pregnancy of the teenage girl while his father lived in his house, <laughs> never understand. Okay, so back to 20, 2002, they hired a guy called Andrew Paul. This guy was a statistician. So what he did, he said, guys, look, I'm gonna focus my my attention to, to a specific market, mom and babies. So that's why I'm gonna focus by. What he did, he built a data infrastructure, start collecting. Whenever someone put a, make a purchase online, they purchase in Target, what he did, he assigned a specific unique number, customer numbers to, to, that, to that person and link this unique ID to email address, credit card that you purchase. By 2010, he was, he, he was able to build a massive data set and train, the, at that time there was not the AI, was not the, but they call it data mining. Data, data mining was the data mining things. 
data I use it, data mining techniques and data analysis analytic techniques to, to, to come up with a specific result. They can say, okay, you are at this specific stage of your pregnancy. You have two, you are at two trimesters of your pregnancy. You are two, two weeks, say 20, 20 weeks at your pregnancy. What, they, what he used, he used a pregnancy test score. How he did that? He, he have built 25 products and categories to tell him exactly, for example, if at some point someone go online and purchase lotion, unsorted lotion, that means you are at your second trimester of your pregnancy. If you if you see a surge on purchase like a product like a calcium, magnesium, that means that's another indicator. What stage are you are, you are in your pregnancy? If you if you see you purchase like a scent, uh, free soap or other huge cotton, ladies, you know it more than I than I do at this point. You know more about that than I do. So on each stage, he can say you are in that. You are close to deliver, or you are six months pregnant, or you are three months pregnant. So by combining those key products, he was able to train his data to tell me exactly you are most likely, exactly would you are pregnant, one, and it also predicts your delivery time, your due date. So when he sent that coupon to, that, to, to, to the teenage girl, his pretty much target was pretty much absolute, I'm not absolute, almost sure that the teenage girl was pregnant. It was not by accident. The manager didn't understand exactly what happened. The guys didn't have any clue what the man was talking about. You sent the coupon about maternity, they be close to my daughter, she's a senior in high school. Are you trying to get her pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's what he, he, he concluded. No, that was not by accident. He was specifically targeted, offer, personal offer to say, you are based on your consumption, based on your purchase, based on historical data, and based also the algorithm that assign you a key test score, there's likelihood you are pregnant. That's, that's a key point. So you can see now the business side of it. Sometimes what they did, they mix up. If they send you a coupon in the mail, target mix it, mix it up with another thing that you can not say, oh, they're spying on me. Uh, they try to make to, to say, oh, it's me by, by accident. No, just to not leave it, let, let you think they, they, they're spying on you. That's the only way. They make that, that's the only way they mix it up with other the flyers or the coupons that say, okay, now I'm not interested in the bathroom, but, I don't, but they, they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what coupon to send you. So some of the techniques that you can see now, they, they, they analyze the combination of approximately 25 products, like I said, and the result, the pregnancy score predicts, indicate the likelihood of pregnancy and also provide an estimate of your of the due date. That's another key point. Estimate the due date is very, that's very key. If I can estimate the due date, I can personalize the offer. How I can do, how I did that because I, because of customer segmentation. 
customer segmentation gives you two things, business opportunity and enable you to customize your offer to the client. That's the key advantage that customer segmentation provides. So as a result, but like I said, it targeting marketing and promotion. So, and also predicting personalization that ensure the ex expecting parents receive relevant offers and recommendation based on precisely the right time. All right. This is some key takeaways. What I did, I give you a broader context of AI in terms of market dynamic. What are the key challenges? How we can leverage AI technology to provide insight. Insight for in terms of customer preference. Insight in terms of customer segmentation, historical data, historical purchase, all those key factors, we can combine it in terms of business to provide, to lead the retailers to put personalized offer. One, targeted marketing, two, and increase profit. Some key takeaways, so uh, we have different business solutions that are going in right now. The, the example that target is, I, I don't have to, to go back on that. So we see new people that's using deep learning for food a, to, to help them to, for food for detection by reducing the fraud by 25%. Walmart is another example. Uber, what they Uber, what Uber did, he used pass riding behavior, trip length, location, and average pickup time to segment customers and personalize wide option. So if I know at 5:30 or 5:45, you are most likely on that specific area. This is a wash hour point. So I can put my drivers in one of this area, at the time you get off work, you pretty much sure you're gonna have someone to pick you up. By using that also, I can use the pricing strategy to maneuver the price and have const someone constantly a, a, have improved a customer satisfaction. That's, that's important. The other key takeaway, everybody's in terms of government regulation, they recognize they need to regulate AI. It cannot be that way. You can, you, 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 you've been experienced, you, you see online like deep fakes, like, uh, uh, Everybody try to manipulate AI for their advantage. So there is a need for a regulator to start somewhere, at some point of time, someone to need to say, hey, stop. We need to agree that thing because if we if if, if we let it if we let it go like that way, we 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 will be end up with a catastrophic thing. That's 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 uh, that's a that's a, a very key takeaway in terms of future work we can apply this kind of research in different sectors for example insurance industry we can predict claims how many claims because one of the thing in insurance industry because i'm just switch something in insurance industry the premium you, you've been paying now is likely tight. 
to the fraud. Insurance company, reinsurers, they have been experiencing a lot of fraud in that industry. If we can use AI to do some prediction, to forecast how many claims, is it your claim is legit? Is it accurate? So let's say you have uh, a, uh, we live in Florida. Every, every time you're gonna have a hurricane, that's a fact. So after the hurricane, we have uh, the insurance company complaining about the, a huge amount of claims. Some of them are legitimate, some of them are not. So how, how we can use those type of technologies to make prediction, to make forecasting, that could be a, a game changer for other sectors, not only the retail sector, it can be used for other sectors. For uh, medical sector, the healthcare, same thing. We can use AI to work and apply AI for, for the good of, of the sector, improve, a, we can diagnose a, a, a disease way before it happening by combining the same way that uh, a uh, Paul was was working was uh, a combining different products to have to have it uh, a a good prediction in terms of a pregnancy score. We can use the same thing in in, in medical or healthcare sector. And lastly, I want you to. Think about that. People very really like to talk about AI. Yeah, AI can do this, AI can do that, but never think about what the background of AI. In any AI works, any AI type of a, 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 a what you call it, type of solution you try to build. If your data is not of high quality, there is no way you can have a good AI solution. Data, yeah, garbage is next to Garbage in, garbage out. That's that is same thing. So you try to this is this is AI here. This is your data. If your data cannot support your model, because your model will be trained on the data. Let me give you an example for that. Facebook. The first face recognition model that Facebook uses. If someone like me, and they try to capture me, they can say I'm a woman. They can say I'm not human as well. They can say I'm an animal. Nothing against them, no. It's because of what? Because of the data they train the model. That's the thing we have to talk about. The first model Facebook release saying, Oprah with me is a guy. That's it. That's a celebrity. Yeah. So <laughs> those things is, that's why I, I, I start by talking about bias in AI. Bias in AI is not because the algorithm or the system want to be biased against some group of people. No, it's because of the data that they've been trained on. That's a key question. Because if you don't have enough infrastructure, data infrastructure to, to train your model, there's no way you can have a good AI model or a good AI solution. That's my key takeaway. It's not about something. But 
you guys need, we've been, we've been fortunate enough because back then we cannot access those technology. It was only reserved for military. Internet was way back 1974. You know, when, when, when he, well, internet, 1994, <laughs> almost 20 years over after that. They've been using the material. But nowadays, you can have all those technologies at your hand, at your fingerprint. That's huge. I want to stop here <laughs> for today. So you can start with the questions. Okay, so you try to, uh, if I understand your question, is mostly uh, what the impact of the employee side, right? Okay, so the first, when the, when the people first uh, first heard about AI, they say, oh man, I'm gonna lose my, lose my job. So there's gonna be a massive layoff, or it's gonna, no. Let me, let me back my, my statement right here. General, the, the, the store, Gino, Gino will uh, do a last store, right? So there have been a, people have been into jazz about having a self-checkout, a, a self-checkout a, a, a station. Now they revert it back. Now they've been closing a lot of check, self-checkouts. So what does that mean? People think the fact they have AI, they can do everything. No, they need some type of human interaction to make it operationalized. Because you try to scan it, sometimes it's very, it's very challenging to scan things and not everybody attacks a text savvy and you can self check out. Yes, it's this way, yeah, but <laughs> so they now they try to limit up to 10 items you can use at self checkout the, 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 the session for self checkout. That's that's the way for in terms of employee that <laughs> that's true. Yeah, AI can can improve can improve uh, employee productivity. If you think as a as an investor uh, or, uh, or as uh, well, whoever you want, you are, so you think AI will be will be doing everything for you? Yeah, there's some yeah. So there's some some sector you're gonna you're gonna see massive uh, AI will be replacing those people. Because they like it, it's like a manual task, routine, like a routine task. That AI would be the a, 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 and paralegal sector, like the, the, the legal sector. Last month, my brother, uh, like two two years ago, he, he had some type of uh, timeshare. He went to he, with his wife uh, to Mexico. They purchase timeshare thing and I said, what did you do man? He said, yeah, this is, the guy said, I can hear that at this school. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna purchase because he said, I'm gonna leave and rent that, that timeshare to make money. I said, are you serious? Okay, two is it. <laughs> they said, no, it's not what we, 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 we said. 
and he keep saying, you know, I use chat GBD to write a legal letter in Spanish, send it to that company in Mexico with this legal argument available on Mexico, not in the United States, to cancel that contract. What does that mean? That should be a someone at a legal sector. I need to come and not explain, not, not explain, and also then have to prepare that later. They specifically say in that contract, you need to write your 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 cancellation letter in Spanish. That make you very hard to cancel that. That's so, that membership. So the interesting thing about that story is, think about it from this point of view. You probably may not be able to speak Spanish, so you went to the next to get them all even all that. But yeah, GPT actually provided a um, a resource that you can just talk about it. That's it. Then. Now we now we can make it uh, or first now we can uh, yeah. So we can have in some sector we're gonna have a a, bit, a great impact a, a a greatest impact compared to others, but not not on every sector and not thinking that AI will replace you. Let me let me try to 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 take a step back about the service industry. For let me uh, let me give you that example. You've been seeing like like a, uh, a company like Google. They try to get some data in healthcare. It's very difficult, very hard to get data from those people because from a lawyer, from a legal uh, a sector or from healthcare sector, they be even very not so restrictive in terms of giving data to them. In that specific context, you need data, quality data, to train your model. In service industry, it's very limited in terms of data you can capture, in terms of data you can collect in order for you as a developer, as a researcher to, to apply to. So that's what compared to like housing market, you can easily go get those data, easily to train, to have your model because you can see this is a, a certain, uh, this is the amount of residential permit, this is the uh, amount of commercial a, uh, a house, that's, you, that's those data is very accessible to them. But in terms of medical services, those people is not easy to let it go. No. So, so to take it one step further, as a small business owner, mm -hmm. um, constantly having to deliver very limited resources in the right place. This is something that would, you know, the market touch with something like this that really helped continue to, you know, level the playing field. 
Yes. Have these tools been made available on a retail basis for small business owners? Obviously, Target they pay the big bucks for what they're what they're paying for. Walmart the same thing. So those of us in here are there are there tools at our access that along with this. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 exactly what I. That's exactly so. For a small business owner, in order for this, this is what this is a good. This is a good thing. This is a bad thing. Let me think, put it that way. Good for you because the the technology is available. At, yeah, it's not too high to pay big boss, big box, whatever you call it. Like to have uh, this technology available to you. But on the other hand, you will be very limited in terms of what you can do because you not you don't have enough resources like you mentioned. You don't have to have the resources to say, hey, I need to apply AI on my business. Where do you start? Where I where I can start? That's the key question. <laughs> so where do I start? That's the, that's the key question. You have to recruit a resource for you to to get this applied to this particular a, a, a business case. For local uh, entrepreneur, for local business owner, you can do two things. You can, you can have something called group purchase to have this technology available because on, on January only, you know me, how many how many people they uh, they fired? The tech industry fired twenty three thousand people. Those are resources available to you guys. You can take advantage of it. Twenty three thousand people was were fired on January only. <laughs> only they make you do the product for them. They say, okay, thank you. I don't know what I need you. You can go, go somewhere else. Those are resources that you can, as a local business owner, you can take advantage of. Those people are available as at the corner. What data set, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the, key, the, the key issue. The data set, it takes time to build those data sets. Some type of group, like, I mean, just like on mm -hmm. the internet, mm -hmm. you talk to people and other cities and states all over that you guys have similarities of what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So, and you can give them data set and you know, work out something. Yeah, them, and, you know, yeah. you're paying one developer to do the work, you guys, all of mm -hmm. them as a share. That's 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 a, that's a one one way. But so I have, I have, I, I have, I have a uh, no, I'm not typing, they, I, I think three of us has a has a nonprofit organization that tried to uh, build something to make it available to uh, local small business owner. That's under, I'm not saying underserved <laughs> community, I will call it under resourced community. So you can have it as a local owner, so you can have it uh, a, to, to, draw, to guide you in terms of technology uh, a, a thing you can have it uh, a, a small business owner a, have this technology available to you because you have to start somewhere start somewhere to capture those data so when someone come to to purchase from you guys you can collect those information because at some point you have you take card right you take credit card you take to say so those are the information you can you can start collecting Later on, you can have a massive data set, uh, get a model you can train against because once uh, the developer is going to come, you're going to say, what your, do you have data? If you don't have data, I cannot do that. In terms of in AI, it's not, you, you, you should see what I'm saying, what I'm talking about. In terms of AI, so I can say this is your 
your customer is living in that specific area, they try to purchase this kind of products and where they purchase it. So I, let me <laughs> give you, <laughs> I always give you a story. And I'm a, back 2021 and I need to change my a Mercedes a C, uh, like a, a auto that C, C, C20, what they call it again? Like a, like a C20, I don't remember what it is. It was, oh, it's, it's like a, 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 a car. I need to, to, to purchase a CSV. I went online, start searching, uh, start looking for all those uh, Mercedes uh, dealership close by. And I found a, since the fact I'm working in uh, Manatee County, so the one in Sarasota is close by to me. So I just, okay, I went on, I, I take, uh, take an appointment with the, with the car, the, the, the ship car and say, okay, I need to check your car because this is what I'm on. And the first thing, the guy was not show up today, that, that day. Mm -hmm. he, he give me another one. He say, oh, you are the guy that, uh, that John wants uh, for the appointment for the, for, for, for the GL, GLA 250? I say, yes. And he said, do you want, do you want some coffee? I said, mm, no, I'm good. So do you want some water? I said, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one said, okay, okay, let's try, let's try the, uh, let's try the coffee. I don't want to. I don't want to try the car because it's a it's a new car. It doesn't work. I'm gonna return it to you. I don't want that. This is what. Let discuss what the option that I have. Let discuss about the price, the feature you're gonna put on my on, on my vehicle. That's what I want. Because at some point, if it doesn't work, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna say I'm gonna return it back to you. I don't want to try it. Like it, it doesn't. It doesn't. It's a waste of time to try and my this car. Okay, the guys. Okay. Uh, I say, and this is what I want. And I put it on the, uh, at the time they question you about what, what type of vehicle you want, what the option was. I said, no, I don't want any option of that, of those. Give me my, sim my car, that's as simple as it is. The guy say, I don't think the car is, uh, you want, uh, this, this kind of car is for you. I said, what? <laughs> so first I said, look, First, I give you all the information that I need. I give you the car I need. I need you the option I need, the feature that I need on my car. You don't even know my name, first. Yeah. You don't even know what, I'm, what I want. That's second. And you, you, you say, this guy is not for me? You what? Know what you want. God. <laughs> Just, just that give you an idea. Sometimes it's not because they are big, big, uh, a, a big uh, a company, big corporate. They know about in terms of customization of the offer, customization of the product, how to tailor your offer to the customer. That's the key marketing point. Not sending like I'm selling car. Yes, you're selling car. I'm telling you what I want. How personalized, tailored it for me. That's a key point. Yes, sir. Thank you for the presentation. My question was more focused on segmentation and kind of like I know like Dr. Jim got this out when it comes to data, but what do you think the implication of using like some size language model would be if you can model like that? Um, because like if you even if you don't have like a large data set, like you said, it doesn't have a lot of data, uh, data but if you use a large language model, it's already built on a large data set. So you don't need to go get data to predict what your data would look like. What do you think the implication of using those instead of like training? Uh, the, the, the issue could be the context. It's not the fact 
using data, I can, so other people get succeeded on, on some uh, applying key AI so, uh, solution against the data in order for, for them to get insight uh, uh, in terms of co a customer preference. No. Data, you have to give context to the data. That's it. The context is very important. So what the context mean? So you can have a, a store and you have a, for example, an event like uh, a, a, like we had on 2021, uh, uh, NFL, what's it called? You, you got it. NFL, uh, Super Bowl, yeah. And as a store in Tampa, you see in this, a huge surge of beer. Like you're selling a lot of beer, you're selling a lot of uh, uh, a thing, by the way. People, what you can put beer and diapers the same same kind of way. That's, I don't know why, it doesn't make sense for me, but this is data. <laughs> so once people try to purchase beer, they purchase diapers. I don't know why. That's, that's it. <laughs> so, and the, uh, uh, okay, so long story short. So, and and you see a, a search about your, your, you're selling a lot of a, 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 a kind of products. But another, so, let's say someone in New York, you try to use that data. And applying, you have a solution and you, you get the data, this data you are applying, you, call, you, you link it and you apply your model to, to have some insight from it. It's not gonna work. Because why? Your data is too specific for a specific context. So on the, this Brazilian market, they have carnival. They have uh, a, they have uh, a, a Black Friday, Mark. They have Black Friday. Don't try to use the data in this, against uh, the same way they use it. It's not gonna work. You have to. You have the data. You have to give context to the data. It's very important. Don't don't try to to plug in things. It's not the way it works. Make sense? Now, while everybody digs out their tickets, I have a couple of announcements. Good job. Okay. So number one, if everybody could take a moment to take out your cell phone, pull up LinkedIn and make connections to everybody that you're seated with. Uh, we've had a lot of people get jobs through our uh, connections that they made at these meetups. So it's amazing. You never know who your next employee or employer is going to be. So keep that in mind. Um, next month, April 17th, we do have our meetup up and running. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember Sri Subramarian from SurveyMonkey. He spoke maybe four or five months ago. Um, amazing presentation. He will be our guest speaker for April. So go ahead and get signed up for that. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw Tom's posts on LinkedIn, but we are changing the name of the program. It will now be the Masters of Science degree in AI and Business Analytics. Um, obviously, we're going to be tweaking the course schedules to be more AI focused, like you just said, super important. So we're very excited about that. Um, the deadline application, the application deadline uh, for this upcoming semester is April 20th. So if you have anybody on your team needs to level up, they need to get some, you know, more technical expertise, get them signed up for our program. Most corporations do pretty significant tuition reimbursement. We're happy to work with you on that. So if you have any questions, reach out to me or to Tom on LinkedIn. He's always available. Um, also, uh, I know that these slides are super data heavy, a lot of content. We do record most of these meetups and we post them on YouTube. Um, so again, if you have not connected with Dr. Tom on LinkedIn, please do so because he'll post that once it's live. Uh, so you can rewatch this at your convenience. 
Um, there's a lot of food left over. Please help yourself, take some to go. And lastly, thank you so much. Safe driving and hope to see you next month. Cool.